What's up, YouTube? I wanted to do a more serious video on Tom DeLonge and the science that he has come forward with so far and talked about and my hopes for that in the future. Don't. I mean, there's a piece of metal uh, from a crash that I've seen, and I've seen the science on it, and it's it's so it's atomically aligned and it's layered in multi uh, like 80 layers within just a few microns of purities of metal that that aren't even in our solar system and they think it needs to be made in in, in an area where there's no gravity so number one it has to be made in space uh number two even if we were to create a machine that can potentially do some of this stuff 3d printing layers of different metals that are of obscene purities it would cost hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. We don't even have that. Why do they think it was made without gravity? Because uh, I think it's the atomic structure. So what happens is, is when you radiate it with terahertz, it loses mass. Something weird. It resonates a, a, some kind of harmonic, and then it gets lighter. And if you hit it with enough terahertz, it'll float. So we're going to be showing people this stuff. We're going to be bringing out the hardware uh, some of the hardware we're going to be bringing out implants we're going to be bringing out videos we're going to be bringing so out you're going to be stuff. showing people this actual physical piece of metal that was constructed in a zero gravity environment in space and if you hit it with enough energy it becomes weightless now i wouldn't say weightless i don't know if we can make enough energy to do that but yes that is our plan in not only and show the experiment so okay what, well if you can't hmm. give it enough energy to make it weightless can you give it enough energy to reduce the mass yes. so it weighs less? Yes. And you can prove this. Yes. Warping the space-time continuum around the object. So you shoot. What you can do is you can shoot an electron over it while it's, while it's not a being A single radiated. electron? Uh-huh. And you collect it and time that. And How do you shoot a single electron? Fuck if I know. I'm not a physicist. It's crazy. Mm. So what happens is, is you shoot this electron, and you know how fast it is to travel over this piece of metal. Mm -hmm. then, you, then you radiate it with terahertz. And then what you does that mean? Radiate it with terahertz. Um, you're, you're you're electrifying and charging the piece of material. Do you know what a what is a terahertz? It's it's a it's a high frequency wave. I don't want to pretend I know that much about it. I just know that the earlier tests w were with radio waves like RF, and uh, and they need to do terahertz. So I, I don't know much more than that. So and so by radi by shooting terahertz at it, the piece of metal can lose mass. And then when you shoot an electron over it, it'll be a different time than the other one when it's not turned on. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, that's a very ambitious project. And let us know when you're ready to go to the moon or uh, Mars or wherever the fuck you're going to go. Uranus? Yeah, you can go to Uranus, all those places. All right. And uh, I hope it's all real. I'm excited. Cool. Thanks, it's guys. true. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on, brother. Yeah, thank Appreciate you so it, much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. So, a nano-layered crystalline metal that has to be fabricated in space and levitates when you radiate it with terahertz? Okay. First off, terahertz are below infrared and above microwave, and there is actually a technology whereby you can float metal objects using lasers. However, it uses gigahertz and not terahertz. I learned about Project Sky Vault from Dr. Paul Wivillet's 2008 book on Secrets of Antigravity Propulsion. Here's a video of that technology in action. The laser beam is made up of infrared light. As the beam pulses, it strips air molecules of their electrons, creating an explosive plasma that propels the craft from below. Also, if you look up crystal growth in space, you will find plenty of information and documentation on how crystals grown in microgravity are able to grow larger and more organized than those grown on Earth. NASA has been studying this for a long time, and I remember hearing them mention it in one of their IMAX films and claiming that they were doing it in the hopes of developing better pharmaceuticals. I remember laughing and thinking that explanation wasn't really why NASA was studying crystal growth in microgravity at all pharmaceuticals. They were actually doing classified material science research into three very specific types of materials, one of which is very similar to the metal that Tom describes, although I'm very curious as to why Tom seems unaware of what these materials are called, or at least unwilling to share their names or any real information about them with the public. So I will spare you all that weight. 
metamaterials are materials which can have a negative index of refraction and are one of the key elements used for producing invisibility cloaks and cloaking devices. Got that? Stealth aircraft are painted with special radar absorbent paint which uses a metamaterial known as barium titanate. And yes, that was classified. Secondly, we have quasicrystals, which, much like metamaterials, have very special photonic properties, such as the ability to bend fiber optic signals at 90 degree angles without losing signal quality. The third type of materials are called photonic bandgap materials, which are used to isolate and filter off different frequencies of light. By using a combination of quasicrystals, metamaterials, and photonic bandgap materials, one could feasibly construct the photonic computer circuits required to build the ultimate quantum computer, invisibility cloaks, etc. Again, I'm not sure why Tom can't talk about this, or why he hasn't learned about it from his high-level inside sources yet. I mean, I talked about all of this stuff nearly a decade ago in a video that I made in response to the 2008 History Channel UFO Files episode on alien engineering. Tom, on the other hand, along with the mainstream media, has yet to tell us anything of scientific interest or value. I honestly can't wait to analyze these floating metal experiments he plans to come out with and verify exactly what is causing it. Because floating things with lasers is old news, and it's not anti-gravity, and it's not warp drive. By the way, I no longer believe in anti-gravity in that sense of the word. I have accepted Einstein and GR, and I'm now, much like Skunk Works researchers today, putting my time and research into figuring out how to build a low-level warp drive, which is kind of what Tom is saying he wants to hear all of a sudden with these former Skunk Works guys. Although Tom is talking about electrons here, when he should be talking about positrons, or negative energy states, as required by the Alcubierre warp drive theory that I talked about in my last video and told everyone to Google Dirac Hole Theory. You can observe for yourselves what classified scientific information really looks like. It looks like any other advanced physics, only nobody showed you how to apply it or how to engineer it. And that's the classified part, where intellectual property comes into play. Intellectual property is the reason why I have trouble believing that a former director at Skunk Works is suddenly going to jump ship and start handing out advanced weapons secrets to the public and world at large. I'm very interested in hearing what Steve Justice has to say for himself, and this experiment with the floating metal that they intend to show us as proof. Stay tuned. More to come. Interrogated for two days straight, saying, um, we need to know who the fuck you are. You know shit you shouldn't know. And uh, so what, like, what specifically should you not have known? I sh the what... The, you, the book what's in the book everything I've been telling you today what is, set them off though like what was the thing that you said that you should not have known the f uh, in my book it is my belief uh, that we have an incredible um, we've made incredible strides creating uh, assets to deal with this stuff that's that's my belief and I'm not speaking for my company okay so some sort of an international collaboration to deal with the threat of alien life and that, that was enough that they pulled you aside and wouldn't let you go for two days and just yeah interrogated so you? so it was the inter it was a more it was an interrogation but it was a pretty hev heavy debriefing of how I got to where I was and it's not like they didn't let me go home this took place at a hotel near my home but they made you sit down and talk to them oh fuck yeah I had there was uh, six of them I think six and so they let you leave and go to sleep and then come back, get something yeah, to eat and came come back, back spent and spent another eight hours because I wasn't rogue. I wasn't like trying to hide anything. I was trying to explain to how them. How did you have all this free time though? What do you mean? I mean, have you have, like, if somebody said, hey, we're going to have you in a room, we're going to talk to you for two days. I'm like, dude, I don't have two days. Well, that's, that's, well, that's maybe you don't. I mean, there's a piece of metal the answer. So I had to figure out a language to talk to these guys. Did you ever think maybe this guy's bullshitting you? Or is he a crazy oh, fuck person? No. Fuck no. No? I'll tell you, you got, that's why you got to hear the whole story. Okay. So. Bah!